I know. Hey, you can't see a thing in here. That's better. Now frame yourself or your breakfast will be getting cold. I I'm not hungry. There's not a man alive worth starving yourself for. Not even Paddy. Especially not Paddy. Look, I don't want anything. You just leave me on my own. There's no point in getting yourself in a state. <laughs> I can't help it. Paddy was the first bloke I ever trusted. I never thought he'd treat me like this. Now, come on, love. All the other blocks I've been with just treat me like a joke. And I got used to it. I thought Paddy was different. More for me. You're not going to put the tables out, then? Oh, weather's on the turn, Betty. Perhaps next year. <sighs> you know, I still can't figure it out. Well, you need to water them more often. <laughs> oh, no, I don't mean the plants. I mean the money. I want to know who's left it for me and Seth. Why? They might want it back. No, oh, well, want to show me appreciation. Maybe that's what they're worried about. <laughs> you know, time was. I'd have been the first one to work it out. Hm. I'm losing my touch. Well, whoever it is, Betty, they don't want you to know. Yeah, but why? That's what I don't understand. It doesn't make sense. And it worries me, having all that cash in the house. I've got to do something with it. We could go to Robin Hood's Bay when <laughs> Seth gets back. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if I could interest you and Mr. Windsor in a spot of fundraising. That's Lady Tara. She's the one marrying a multi-millionaire. <laughs> I'm organising a sponsored fun run. Eight miles? Oh, well, there's a four-mile option for the less athletic. I'm sorry, we can't possibly. Why not? Vic's got a bad back, and I don't like running. Why don't you ask Kim? She likes giving people a run for their money. <laughs> what was all that about? A uh, sponsored fun run. I don't suppose you... Uh, no, not really my scene. Uh, Steve might, though. He's fairly fast on his feet. Why don't you ask him tonight? He should be bad. Tonight? Yes, I was hoping I could persuade you to come round for a drink. Actually, it's about the playgroup. I want to become more involved. Really? Yeah. I thought we could discuss it over a glass of wine. OK, why not? Well, my place, 8.30? I'll look forward to it. Great. Right, there you are, Paddy. Thanks. Uh, Mandy always did it. She threw you out. It's your own fault. I did warn you. Where money and my family's concerned, it's a matter of give and take. You give, they take. What would you know? Mandy's the best thing that ever happened to me. If that's how you feel, do something about it. Get yourself up there and apologise to her. Take her some flowers or something. Even better, take her out for a meal. Yeah, but you can, eh? She's in a tandoori chicken. Just what every girl wants. <laughs> well, he wants to forget about Mandy, get himself out and have a good time. He's a free agent now. Well, there's this party coming up. Scott's bringing a few lasses. No, I never be well up for it. Well, I'm off to give Desmond Morris a ring. Let me know now until man hasn't died out. Look, I don't want anybody else. I want Mandy. Oh, she's chucked you. Deal with it. No, it's, it's only temporary. We just had a misunderstanding, that's all. She'll come round. Where is she? She's calmed down a bit. And we're back to square one on the money front. I'm not worried about the money. I've never seen her so upset. You leave it to me. There you go, Flower. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> thanks. Uh, how tall do you want? A few legs breaking. Zack! You just let me know. I might set you up on that. Well, thanks a lot. You've been very helpful. Huh? Mandy, love. 
Are you sure you're all right? Yeah. I'm a dingle, aren't I? I'm used to being kicked in the teeth. I'm sure Paddy never meant to do that. No? Well, the more I think about it, huh? he didn't only let me down, he let you look down and all. I mean, Paddy never actually said he was going to lend us that money. Yeah, well, he never said that he wouldn't. Still, you're right about one thing. It's not worth worrying over the silly pillock. Paddy's a right to spend his money how he wants. He's got to think of himself. Yeah, but if it was me, right, I would have given it to him. He wouldn't have needed to ask. You know why he didn't give us the money, though, don't you? Why? Because we're dingles. He doesn't trust us that we'll give it him back. Don't be daft. It's true. Still, at least I know how he feels about me. He loves you. No, he doesn't. He thinks like everybody else. He thinks we're trash. What on earth are you doing? Uh, I'm just going to stash some stuff for me and Mandy have had a row. She's throwing you out? Pat, if I'd known this was going to happen, I'd never have offered you the partnership. So where are you staying? Ah, I was hoping... Uh, oh, no. Well, it won't be for long. Just until me and Mandy work something out. OK, if you must. Thanks, sorry, you're a star. <laughs> uh, look... Mandy will come round. I'm going up there later to talk to her and I'll sort everything out. But she's losing her home. Yeah, and if I get the partnership, I'll be able to buy her own home. And what about the rest of the dingles? No, not my responsibility. Oh, come on, Zoe, I'm not being unreasonable. I've had loads of girlfriends, you know. I've, I've never been expected to pay for the relatives' rent. Mm, but none of them were dingles. I'll be with you in a minute, Mr Richardson. Look. Maybe we should put the partnership on hold. Why? Because I don't want to be the cause of any problems between you and Mandy. You're not. It's just a stupid argument. We had an agreement. I said I wanted to be a partner, and I meant it. This is what I've worked for. It means a lot to me. Yes, I And I'm know. not backing out now. Couldn't you find someone a little less bright than the vicar? It has to be somebody bright. That's the whole point. Yeah, but what if something goes wrong? That's what rehearsals are for. All you have to do is time how long it takes you to get to the stud and back. That's the way. Morning. I don't know. I'm starting to wonder if this was such a good idea. <laughs> it was your idea. Yeah, no, that's what I'm worried about. It's just that now that we're actually doing it, it all seems too easy. That's because we've got everything planned. <laughs> Come on, lads, it's my 18th birthday party. I want some decent entertainment. Not a bunch of prats from a pub band singing Agar Did. And uh, another pint of lager, please, Terry. Hey, make that an orange juice. It's not your birthday yet. What about strippers or something like that? What, well, singing how you do? That would be a first. Well, but the paying for it when you can get it for free. Mm. Speak for yourself. <laughs> it's not a bad idea, though. You're coming of age in that. No, I don't want strippers. It's pathetic. I'll tell you what. I could get a karaoke in. Yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't be too bad. I can hardly wait. <laughs> Someone gave Betty £5,000. Yes. Oh. Can I have a pint, Alan, please? Did you hear about Betty? What about her? Well, someone's made an anonymous donation. £5,000. Is that right? Do you know who it was? I haven't got a clue. Anyway, what does it matter as long as it helps her and Seth out? Yes, well, it hasn't, has it? Why not? She went to see the bank yesterday to use it as a down payment on the mortgage. And? She was turned down. Apparently, she's too old. <laughs> Lady Oakwell, isn't it? I read the announcement in The Times. Congratulations. Thank you. You must be delighted. Yes, Lord Thornfield is quite a catch. And some and rich with it. So everybody tells me. So, what did you have in mind? I really don't know. Only I can see you're looking at one of our exclusive designs. Of course, they are originals and rather expensive. But I imagine money isn't an issue in this case. Why don't you try one on? It'll give you an idea of how it feels. No. Uh... I'm sure you're going to be very happy. Um, I'm sorry, um, I've forgotten something. Uh, Lady well. <laughs> 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 
I sold the bike that Tara gave me. Well, that's ironic. Tara's money being used to help Betty and Seth. Yeah. Look, do me a favour. Don't say anything to Betty about this. I don't want her to know. If she thinks it's me, she probably won't take the money and she'll think I'm trying to buy her off. I don't know if that's what you want, but I think you're wrong. I think she'd be delighted. Why? Hasn't done her any good. She can't even get a mortgage. The repayments would be too high. They'd only be spread over a few years because of their age. And that's all that's stopping them? As far as I know, yeah. So, if somebody else was to get a mortgage, then everything's going to be OK? I guess so. Now what are you up to? What are you doing here? I'm looking for Booth. He's out. I really need to talk to him. Look, if you know where he is, tell me, please. No! It's important! Don't you think you've done enough damage already? Leave him alone. I can't. Not until I've talked to him. For goodness sake, Tara, go home before somebody sees you. I can't. You don't understand. There's been a mistake. I can't marry Michael. I still love Biff. How could you be so stupid? I had to see him. Well, I could just talk to him. Tell him it was a mistake. It's too late. I know I could make him understand. Biff's left you. If I tell him how I feel, we belong together. Tara, it would never work. Your money would always get in the way, and Biff would end up hating you. He loves me. Then why did he leave you? He knew you'd never change. All you really care about is your social standing and the stately home. God, that is not true. I care about Biff. If I'd known it was going to be like this... I can't bear it. Stop being with him. Please, Kathy, tell him. I've got to see him. No. No, Tara, Biff doesn't need you anymore. I need him. I love him. <whistles> yeah. Michael. Um, Michael, yes. Yeah, everything's fine. No, I, I got held up at the bridal shop. Look, could I call you back? Yeah, yeah, promise. Mm, you too. You don't love Biff. Oh, I do. <gasps> Come on, you've just been choosing your wedding oh, frock. Oh, Kathy, it isn't as simple as that. For Biff's sake, I'll forget we ever had this conversation. I think you better go. Kathy! Go back to Michael. Just leave Biff alone. So I go upstairs while you keep Ashley talking. I get changed, climb out the window, then run to the stud. And I'll wait a few minutes when I get there. Better make it five. It's got to look like there's been a break in, remember? All right, five minutes. Then I run to the crossroads and then back here. There you go. Nothing to it. It's easy for you to say. Oh, cheer up. At least you don't have to entertain the vicar. <laughs> so what do you think, red or white? Red, it's got more of a kick. Yeah, it would be. That's the expensive stuff. Still, we'll soon be able to afford to replace it. <laughs> Look, don't forget to time everything. We need to know exactly how long it takes. Ashley. I hope I'm not too early. Uh, no, perfect timing. Please, come in. Thanks, Mary. Good night. Thanks, good night. You gave Betty the money. Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? Because I didn't want anybody to know. She can't get a mortgage. I know. 
I'm going to apply for a mortgage on Betty's place. Can you afford it? Well, if she pays me the rent, which covers repayments, yeah, it's not a problem. I think you're very brave. I wouldn't want to be Betty's landlord. <laughs> Don't you think I should do it? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Right. All I need to do now is persuade Betty. She still hasn't forgiven me. Oh, she will. Now you're not seeing Tara, there's no reason why she shouldn't. True. Of course, if we could get back together. There's no chance of that, Kat. I know how you felt about her. Me and Tara are finished. But what if she didn't want to finish? She's seeing Michael. They're not married yet. She can still change her mind. She won't. Yeah, but what if she did? Would you still have her back? I'm getting on with my life. Tara can get on with hers. She can do whatever she likes. I don't care anymore. So, come on. What's brought this on? Oh, nothing. Just want to talk about the wedding. Um, I guess I was just wondering if you were really over her. That's all. I am. So stop worrying. Good. So does that mean you're available? What for? For a date with a very old friend. Uh -huh. I thought we could um, go out for a meal and celebrate your newly found freedom. No. My treat, and I'm not going to take no for an answer. Okay. Thank you. This is um, good stuff. Yes, Steve. Uh, not for me, thanks. I've got some work to do. If you'll excuse me, I need to make a few phone calls. I'll use the mobile, so don't disturb you. Not tonight. I'm sorry, it can't wait. I'm sorry. I hate it when he does that. Steve seems to spend half his life chasing money. Money isn't everything. Oh, I agree. I am so sorry. So am I. Look, will you come down here? I feel like flipping Romeo. Yeah, look what happened to him. <laughs> Please. I know you're upset. Upset? You made an idiot out of me and my family. I didn't mean to. Oh, your money's too good for us, isn't it? No, I, I can explain. No. Oh. No one takes me for a ride, Paddy, not even you. Look. I know you're disappointed that I couldn't lend you anything, but this is our big chance. You're giving Zoe the money instead of us! Well, don't you see? We'll be set up for life. I'm doing this for both of us. This is your future as well as mine. We don't have a future! Mandy. Go away. No, you don't understand. I said go away! Mandy! Mandy! Fine. If that's your answer. <laughs> it is, and it ain't gonna change. Well, I'll leave you to it then. You and your family deserve everything you get. So, uh, there I was, halfway up a drain pipe, seeing three coins and a fountain. <laughs> so much for misspent you. <laughs> well, that was it. Uh, one showing of La Dolce Vita, and I decided I had to see Rome. I packed my bags the following day, and I left for Italy. How impulsive. Well, uh, we all have to take our chances once in a while. True. <laughs> I'm sorry, my, my life history isn't terribly exciting. Uh, no, 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 it's fascinating. Uh, so where did you go? Uh, Siena, Florence, um, Rome, of course. <laughs> Emmerdale must seem very tame by comparison. <laughs> <laughs> this hotbed of sin and gossip, I had a more peaceful time in Rome. <laughs> Steve's very quiet. Yes, he, well, he's got a lot to get through. <laughs> if you want me to go, I... No, no. So tell me, what was it that made you decide to become a vicar? Well, it was whilst I was in Rome.
All I was doing was trying to explain to her what was going on and she turns around and covers me in it. Yeah. Thank you. I did try to tell you it wasn't going to be easy. Well, she didn't even listen to me. Well, Mandy was angry. What did you expect? She could have heard me out and deserved that much. Oh, what's the point? It don't matter what I'd have said to her, she'd made up her mind about me already. Well, you can't keep turning up on a doorstep pretending that the evictions aren't happening. And why not? You do it all the time. That's unfair. Well, we're talking about my future here. She should have been pleased for me. All she ever does is reduce everything down to how it affects the dingles. Well, her family's important to her. But what about me? You can't blame Mandy for feeling upset. And I can't bail the dingles out every time they get into trouble. I wanted to marry Mandy, not a flaming family. Well, not anymore. I've had it with her. Paddy, Paddy, don't let this come between you. Well, it's too late. From now on, she's on her own. And then I moved to Anglesey. I'm sorry. Look, look, it's late. I really should be going. Uh, no. Just have one more glass. Oh, I don't know. I insist. And you can tell me all about Anglesey. Go on, then. Do you know, um... I've really enjoyed myself this evening. Well, that's what you're here for. You're a very good listener. I must admit that most people think that vicars lead very dull lives. Oh, no. <laughs> Hello. Are you just still gossiping? <laughs> Steve, about time. Yes, I was beginning to wonder what had become of you. You were very quiet up there. Oh, sorry about that. Here, let me. <laughs> Thank you for a most enjoyable evening. Um... We must do it again sometime. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, I nearly forgot. I'm organising a fun run. Are you interested? Yeah, put me down. Great. The more the merrier. There's a, a four-mile or an eight-mile option. <laughs> I'd better start practising. <laughs> <laughs> well, well um, good night, then. Good night. <laughs> oh, <flipping. laughs> good night. How did it go? 35 minutes exactly, and that's running to the crossroads. Next time I'll be in the horse box. That's perfect, Kim. I reckon I can be in and out of there in 30 minutes. You were right. I think it's going to work. I'm not so sure. Ashley noticed it was really quiet upstairs. Oh, is that a problem? Well, yeah, of course it's a problem. <laughs> that's it. Problem solved. What? Use the monitor? Yeah, we record you making your calls. You switch on the tape upstairs before you leave. We can't go wrong. 